Hey guys, uh, a couple of visitors have said that after they've seen the video and then they've seen uh, the site in real life that they didn't realize that it was as big as it was. It probably looks smaller in the videos. So I'm standing back a little ways to give you some idea of scale, but again, just to recap, it's uh, 30 meters in length and 10 meters wide. Um, I know you guys are tired of hearing excuses, but this week has been absolutely horrible. There was a couple days where I could have set it all on fire and just walked away. It was I was that frustrated. Um, it's the rain. That's what's happening. So this is the rainiest portion of the rainy season here in Southeast Asia, or at least in Thailand. And um, there's actually a holiday that marks the end of the rainy season, and that holiday uh, was yesterday. So. I would say within seven to ten days, the rain will literally stop. It's like clockwork. Uh, we may get a couple more thunderstorms here this this weekend or or this next week, um, and then it should be over, and therefore my problems will be over. But for next year's rainy season, I definitely need to get some trench work done, and I'll take you over there and show you that. All right. So this is the root of the problem. Uh, this is all low ground uh, surrounding me. Obviously, I had the soil filled up above flood level or anything like that but the neighbor came in after me and he built higher than I did um, so there's several factors and ultimately it falls on me because there's some poor design choices um, and, and just some strokes of bad luck and, and things like that but um, my sump tanks are getting flooded out which means that I haven't been able when, when these tanks are flooded out that means that my nutrients are diluted which means that my tomatoes might run for 12 hours you know, at a at an e, well, I use EC, so you may run it for 12 hours in an EC of something like one or 0.5, because it's been so diluted and so heavily flooded out, the nutrients are gone. Um, okay, so no big deal. 12 hours, we can do that, but we can't do that 12 to 18 hours every day for a week, because I'm spending all my time pumping uh, water out of here. Uh, so we definitely need to rectify that because at this point, I'll show you here in a little bit, the tomatoes are, are flowering. So if the tomatoes are determined that the nutrients are not there, um, they're going to start do dropping flowers and you'll lose essentially, like I would lose my first two for sure. And in some instances, three and four trusses of fruit set, which would be devastating in terms of production. So basically what will happen is and, uh, to solve the problem, we need to dig a trench uh, from the area that you're looking at here and then this all needs to be dug out and we'll drain all of this water into the pond um, which you guys have seen before there's a pond over there so uh, that should mitigate all of our problems uh, the other thing was uh, the concrete company did an excellent job of like building up and filling the soil around the concrete making it higher and, and also compacting that soil but when the roofers came in after they built the roof uh, outside of the concrete of course and they put their own footings in which means that that soil had been dug out by hand and then refilled so um, there was some loose areas because the concrete company was using heavy machinery the roofer wasn't he was using shovels which is fine um, but the point being is the soil was no longer compacted and there was uh, snake ways and waterways and you can see where like the water had been entering here and that water is literally traveling underneath the concrete, finding the paths of least resistance, and into this sump tank, which is offline. That's not even being used, but this was being utilized for the fish. The bottom of this sump tank has a hole in it. I have to patch the hole and, and see if I can even get it operational again. Um, but this, uh, I've had a water pump in here for about 18 hours now. And the rate of flow into the bottom of this sump tank from the saturation under the under the concrete and into in the earth, the water flowing in is the same rate as the water that's being pumped out, and that's been going on for 18 hours. So uh, we just need things to dry out, guys. I won't. I don't want to keep going on about it because it's dumb and I'm tired of thinking about it. But uh, yeah, we just got a lot of rain, too much rain. The earth couldn't handle it, and uh, this is what we're left with. So on to the good news. Okay, so I fired up the towers today and they worked beautifully. Um, there is still a lot of unknowns as to whether this system of bows and my pump was gonna be enough to pressurize everything because, uh, again, this concrete pad in the growing house is sloped uh, fairly aggressively. And that's to allow gravity drain you know, back to the sumps. So 
everything must stay under pressure at all times otherwise the towers at the end per se would be left out like they wouldn't have any water flow so I'm running a pretty big pump it's a hundred of uh, hundred it's 12,000 liters per hour and that 12,000 liter per hour pump is running into a pressure pump because I don't want I do not there's no media in these towers guys it's like a shallow water culture um, the water stays to about here and then overflows into the next column so what I'm doing is using a canister pressure filter uh, to keep any large solids from entering my series of towers because they will build up um, they will build up in in the bottom of these trays and then you've got fish shit, shit, shit and dirt and whatever uh, sitting on your roots it's probably not completely unavoidable but uh, the filter will definitely help mitigate some of that and I suppose we'll have to take series of them down and clean them uh, eventually but I'm not worried about that yet all right and the other part of good news is the tomatoes they are doing uh, I'm, I couldn't be happier honestly they're doing really well uh, these are pink brandy wines you can see we've got tons and tons of flowers everywhere uh, that's not a brandy wine I'm sorry and, and those of you who know tomatoes you you would have known that um, these are brandy wines so yeah they're, they're doing really well they're healthy they're happy they're not showing any signs of the deficiency and uh, I'm making my own hydroponic mix completely from scratch so every single macro and micronutrient um, I have ordered in chelated form and uh, some, someone specifically has been kind enough to basically teach me how to do that from scratch and uh, I, I couldn't be happier with how these uh, nutrients are performing of course the nutrients themselves uh, are you know legitimate commercially produced uh, chemical fertilizers but it's how you mix them at the end of the day that's going to give you your end product. And so um, instead of everything's in powder formed and everything's 100% uh, water soluble or chelated or technical grade depending on uh, the micro or macronutrient. But very pleased with how everything's performing. So I'll, some of the fruit is already set. Like here's a little tomato here. Um, yeah. So I'd say in another 60, 70 days, we'll probably have some ripe fruit. Uh, a lot of the buckets aren't planted yet. I still have about 50 buckets that are open, and those will go towards uh, Romas and Amish paste. Um, so mostly growing big beef here on the right, a beef steak on the left, brandy wines on the end, and I only did like 20 brandy wines, uh, mostly for personal consumption. And then all of those little guys on the on the right hand row there, the far right hand is, um, it'll come to me, give me a minute. Sun gold, sun golds, little hybrid cherries that are uh, super sweet. So, and these guys, I've grown these a couple times, they always do really well. If you're looking for a, just an all around decent cherry tomato, um, and you don't mind growing hybrids, those sun golds are phenomenal they just perform very well I mean I didn't lose a single plant to transplant they've all taken off they're all growing evenly they're all producing uh, first and uh, second sets of flowers and these little guys I don't even bother um, I don't bother pruning well I shouldn't say pruning but I don't sucker them I let them go crazy that's why they're at the end of the row, or on, on the far side of, because the, the suns are on our right side here, and the sun's coming in this direction, and that's why they are where they are, because I will let them grow as much as they want, because they will set, the amount of fruit these things will set will blow your mind. It's just tons and tons of fruit, but if you sucker them like a larger tomato variety, um, all you're doing is depriving yourself of more fruit and the fruits are real small they're even smaller than your average cherry okay guys that about wraps it up I did put a few plants uh, seedlings uh, that were big enough to go into the towers um, it's just mostly just like I think it was arugula and parsley uh, I got a ton of basil on the way I've got a ton of lettuce on the way and all of that good stuff so I'd say in another seven to ten days we should have probably about 30 to 40 percent of the towers will have uh, seeds in them and of course I'll be starting more seeds and sequence and all of that good stuff 
And the fish are doing very well too. Uh, I should mention they have, the growth rate on those things is absolutely phenomenal. The bear money have gone from uh, uh, two, two and a half inches all the way up to four, and in some cases four and a half inches. They have literally uh, doubled in size. Um, they're consuming, yesterday I fed 600 grams of feed to um, right around a thousand fish. So uh, we'll have to do more testing and I'll have to monitor uh, when I'm able, get some weights and we'll look at feed conversion ratios and things like that. But uh, without a doubt in my mind, the feed is um, very good. I have no complaints about the feed. It is a legitimate commercial uh, fish feed produced here in Thailand from Thai feed mills and uh, it's 42% uh, protein which is which is high and of course that protein percentage goes down uh, depending on the size of the food pellet and the growth stage of the fish but um, yeah I mean the food itself is, is demonstrating that it's uh, doing what it's supposed to the fish are growing well that's it for today guys thank you for watching and uh, again I still need to do the video on the fish I know you're tired of hearing that but I will get it done at some point uh, you just have to bear with me. As you can see, everything here is still a disaster. I need to get in here and spend a day just doing nothing but cleaning. Um, but I, I haven't, I haven't had it. I haven't had, it. I haven't had the time. So uh, we'll get there, though. We'll get there. Things are progressing, and uh, try to stay positive and uh, continue to drive on.